Welcome to a Legendarium special about the Pilgrim's Rough Crossing to America. In this installment, we will talk about the hardships faced by the Pilgrims as they journeyed from England to America on the Mayflower. The voyage of Puritan settlers from England to North America is one of the best-known events in United States history. While the year 1620 is recorded as the date of their departure, it began in 1608. While most Puritans hoped to remove Catholic influence from the Church of England, separatists regarded the English Church as so corrupt that salvation could only be found outside it. In 1607, the separatist congregation in Gainsborough, led by preacher John Smythe, tried to leave England for Holland in pursuit of religious freedom, and the Puritans defined religious freedom not as political freedom, but living in accordance with God's will. They first attempted to escape from the city of Boston in England, but the captain of the ship they charted betrayed them and they were arrested. The local authorities tried some of them in the Boston Guildhall, but most of them escaped the rough justice of 17th century England. The next year, in 1608, the Gainsborough congregation again left England for the Dutch city of Leiden, and this time they succeeded. They set about creating new lives for themselves, buying land near the Peters Kirk Church and building houses that became known as the Anglesey Port or English Alley. John Robinson, one of the founders of the separatist movement in England, became pastor to the Pilgrims during his time in Leiden. However, the separatists grew concerned about their Dutch hosts, whom they found far too free-thinking and radical for their taste. They also made little money, and the country folk found their new urban environment alien indeed. Robinson considered leaving for America, but his plan was thwarted by his death. One of his assistants, William Brewster, a veteran of the 1608 flight, would take over Robinson's American plan. Brewster had contact with another separatist leader named John Carver back in England, who along with Robert Cushman negotiated with the Virginia Company for land in America where the separatists could legally land and settle. After one final joint meal and service in the house of John Robinson, 16 men, 11 women, and 19 children made the journey from Leiden to Rotterdam. They traveled on foot, on horseback, and by carriage, carrying their possessions. After boarding the ships, they traveled to Southampton, England on July 22nd, 1620. By August 1620, a group of 40 saints had joined a much larger group of secular colonists handpicked by the Virginia Company, whom the separatists called Strangers. They set sail from Southampton on two merchant ships, the Mayflower and the Speedwell. The Speedwell did not live up to its name and began to leak immediately. The ships headed back to port and all the travelers squeezed themselves and their belongings onto the Mayflower, a cargo ship about 80 feet long and 24 feet wide, able to carry 180 tons of cargo. Christopher Jones served as her captain. Because of the delay caused by the Speedwell, the Mayflower crossed the Atlantic at the peak of storm season. Unsurprisingly, their journey proved horribly unpleasant. The Mayflower, like other 17th century merchant ships, was a cargo vessel designed to haul lumber, fish, and casks of French wine, but not passengers. Its square rigging and high, castle-like compartments helped during short trips along the European coastline, but when the Mayflower's bulky design went into the strong westerly winds of the North Atlantic, it was often blown backwards, which meant the pilgrim's journey in the crowded, cold, and damp ship was all the longer. These storms could blow them backwards for hours, if not days, at a time. 
Many of the passengers became so seasick that they could barely stand up. As more and more of the pilgrims threw up in the hold, some of the sailors took to taunting them for their weak bellies. The waves became so rough that they swept one of the strangers overboard. Pilgrim leader William Bradford later described this as the just hand of God upon him, for he had been a proud and very profane young man. Pilgrims also had to survive on meager rations of hardtack biscuits, dried meat, and beer. Remarkably, of the 102 passengers on the Mayflower, including three pregnant women and more than a dozen children, only one person died. Indeed, one of the pregnant women gave birth in the rocking ship and named her son O'Shaughness. After 66 miserable days at sea, the ship finally reached the New World. There, the Mayflower's passengers found an abandoned Indian village and not much else. That Indian village had been emptied by a plague brought by previous European explorers. On top of that, the pilgrims also realized that they landed in the wrong place. Cape Cod lay at 42 degrees north latitude, well north of the Virginia Company's territory. Technically, the Mayflower colonists had no right to be there. Nonetheless, they chose to settle there. William Bradford wrote on November 9, 1620, Being thus arrived in a good harbor and brought safe to land, we fell upon our knees and blessed the God of heaven who had brought us over the vast and furious ocean and delivered us from all the perils and miseries thereof. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.